Hey there, uh, this is William Letterer, Executive Director at the Chocolate Church Art Center in Bath, Maine. It is a beautiful evening here in my backyard, so I thought I would uh, come out and uh, welcome you to our second episode of our series, Art for Good. This is a series in which we spend some time with artists and organizations who share our belief uh, that the arts are truly one of the best ways that we can make the world a better place. Uh, before we get started, I would like to just take a second to thank David Matero Architecture for sponsoring the series. And I'd also like to offer thanks to our members, our donors, our volunteers, everyone who helps us do what we do. Um, we could not do this without you, so thank you so much. Please reach out if you're interested in donating or volunteering with us. We would love to have you. Um, so in this second episode, we're going to spend some time with artist Kimberly Becker, uh, who also happens to be the curator in our gallery at the Chocolate Church Art Center. Uh, Kimberly has a project called Dolls for Change, which we'll hear about in this episode. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into it. I will let her explain it, but it is fascinating work and uh, incredibly, incredibly good work that she's doing with this organization. Um, please feel free to reach out with any questions for us, for Kimberly. All the contact info should be uh, in the description and in the video. Um, so uh, also while you're watching, uh, please consider making a donation if you can. Uh, we're putting this content out for free, but we would love it if you would consider making a donation so that we can continue to do stuff like this. Um, all right, with that, I'm pretty much gonna turn it over to Kimberly. Um, please check out our website for information on more episodes of this series and other programming we have coming up. We've got a lot of it and it's all great stuff. So thanks so much. And with that, please enjoy the second episode of Art for Good with Kimberly Becker. Thanks. Hey there, um, my name's Kimberly Becker and I am the curator at the Chocolate Church Gallery here in Bath, Maine. But right now you are in my studio, so you get to see my how I work every day, where I am, and where all the making happens. Uh, this is my my home base for all of my art making, all of my doll making and clothing and feminist artwork that I've put together. Sure, so Dolls for Change is my way of fundraising for uh, building bathroom units for young women in Uganda. There's a need for privacy and respect for these young women as they get into their teenage years and need, uh, they need to be honored um, in a way. And at the moment, most of them just share with the boys, there are no doors or anything, and most of them drop out of school once they get their periods. They just are sort of don't want to deal with it in public with others. Um, so we build bathrooms for them. The, uh, the units cost about $11,000 each. And so I sell dolls on my website, uh, sewlikeagirl.com. And the dolls um, fundraise enough money over the course of like a year for us to build an entire uh, installation for them. My dolls are made with recycled materials. So I find brown linen pants or a black cotton shirt or white fabrics at Goodwill. And I cut them up and I make them into um, the bodies of the dolls. And then if you can see here, this would be like a body that I cut out from one of my stencils. And it would um, it was made from a beautiful pair of linen pants that did not fit me, so. <laughs> and um, this is one that I started to stuff and then the legs and arms are also separately all stuffed together, stuffed and filled with little beans. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process. I've made thousands of dolls. Um, and then I buy beautiful silk tank tops or printed skirts and I cut them up. I use a pattern and um, the pattern becomes my template for creating little dresses for the dolls. So this, this is a skirt I bought in London. Um, it's a vintage 1960s skirt, and I've been cutting it up and making doll dresses um, from it. So you can see there's a wide range of options, but each doll is unique. Um, the process actually started back in the I guess it was a few years ago, I started making a doll every day. It was sort of my feminist movement. Um, my art tends to be women focused. 
and I decided it would be a good thing to put that, that energy of creating these dolls towards something positive where I can actually make somewhat of a dis difference for somebody in the world. The director of the nonprofit I work with said that this will literally change the life of an entire village, which is amazing to me. And, and it's almost something I can't comprehend because it's such a simple thing, but we're pretty happy to be doing it. So. So the, um, most of my work is a feminist focused art collection. I, I, I feel like it's my job to discuss women's issues through my art and, um, and that most of what I do actually has some effect on helping women to be more seen and heard. Even in the 21st century, we're not being seen and heard. I believe, um, the Me Too movement was a good start but there's a lot more to be done. So um, the project I'm working on right now is this is a singular piece. I've taken clothes that I've collected from Goodwill and other um, Salvation Armies and such um, and layered them into outfits that are all uh, a, a sort of a combination of many different styles, many different cultures, many different types of women to talk about how we are as a unit, a multi-layered, group and intersectional feminism is an important discussion and topic for us to understand as a culture uh, that women who have different body types different skin colors different nationalities different socioeconomic statuses um, different sexualities women who like have different different needs need to be heard the same and as much as straight white women, which is primarily who has controlled the feminist discussion up until now. Um, so these pieces are a discussion of the multi-layers of being female. And on the walls, I'm going to have embroidered pieces. I'll show you one of them. Um, embroidered panels that I am discussing just that issue. So they're gonna be, um, definitions of intersectional feminism, suggestions of how we can be better uh, better at helping people to understand what intersectional feminism is and how, how we can bring all women into the fold when we are talking about equality and women's rights. And um, yeah, so that's my newest work. But this kind of all started before the dolls with my house dresses. So my house dresses, I sew these dresses together using silk and cotton, and then I paint the house, the, each dress belongs to a one woman's story, right? So uh, this woman told me her story and gave me an image of her home that she was living in when the story happened. Um, the stories talk about situations where women feel somehow unseen or unheard or ignored, overlooked um, because we're female. And I stitch their stories on the back of the dress so their story is told and then you can see the house that they lived in when the story happened. Um, each dress is unique. Sometimes it's a really hard story, like, you know, being abused in some way, but sometimes it's something as simple as being not heard and I'm trying to tell those stories so that other women recognize that it's important to share the stories and to identify them as something that needs to change. Sure, so so I, ran, I went to Rhode Island School of Design and I majored in textiles. I didn't even know that was a thing until I got there. You could actually major in something where my studio was a loom. Like it was, it was a very unique experience. And after RISD, I worked in the industry making garments and working for garment manufacturers, upholstery manufacturers. I can tell you the craziest stuff about how many threads per inch is in the upholstery that you're sitting on in your living room. <laughs> I can probably design some of it. Um, but then I went to Paris and I trained at this at Lissage, which is an embroidery house in Paris and they have a school. This was one of the pieces that they had me make in order to learn the techniques of the tambour hook, which is the haute couture tool 
that um, basically makes anything you see with beadwork or embroidery on the runway in, in Europe was done all by hand. So my training is, is pretty deep in that regard and, um, and I apply it as I can throughout my work. But the um, embroidery has been with me forever. My grandmother embroidered and knitted and crocheted like you know, so many other people's grandmothers. And I, and I just never was able to let it go. That's sort of deep inside of me. Sure. So, uh, so like a girl, S E W like a girl.com is the website where you can buy the dolls and learn more about, uh, the work that I'm doing in Uganda. And I'm also teaching a doll workshop very soon, coming up in early May at Snow Farm out in Western Massachusetts. So if anybody wants to learn how to make a doll, we're going to spend the weekend safely making dolls and telling stories and sharing um, ideas about this kind of work. Um, so that, that's something that's coming up. And I imagine at some point in the future, the Chocolate Church will be offering workshops. I also, you know, teach sashiko and stitching um, techniques and other things like that. So, yeah. So I hope hope maybe those of you that are watching, we can meet someday. And I'll teach you how to make a doll.